Saint Maximilian Kolbe, the great apostle of Mary, once commented that if angels could be jealous of men, they would be jealous for only one reason, Holy Communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria. Today, the Catholic Church celebrates the great solemnity of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, commonly known as Corpus Christi. Before commenting on today's Gospel, let's see how this beautiful Eucharistic feast was first established. The story is truly fascinating. It was in the 11th century, when Europe was in the period of the High Middle Ages, when a 16-year-old girl called Juliana was in prayer in the convent of the Augustinian nuns of Mont Cornillon. Juliana, who was from the city of Liège in Belgium, had become an orphan at the age of five years old, and the nuns had therefore taken her under their care. So, so Juliana was living, praying, and studying with the nuns in their convent. One day, as she was in prayer, she received a vision in which she saw the moon in all of its splendor, a full moon, a full and bright moon, but with a dark stripe that crossed it diametrically. This dark stripe, unfortunately, was affecting the beautiful light and brilliance of the moon. Impressed by this vision, Juliana immediately told the nuns about it, but they quickly dismissed her vision as the fruit of her youthful imagination. But the young girl kept seeing the same vision on and off for quite some time afterwards. After a long period of time in which uh, she spent in prayer and recollection, around the year 1225, Juliana finally heard a heavenly voice that explained to her what this vision was all about. The, the voice said that the moon symbolized the Catholic Church on earth, and the dark stripe or the line that went across the moon represented the absence of a liturgical feast in honor of the body and blood of Christ. The, church, the church's brilliance and glory, represented by the full moon, was incomplete because the feast of the body and blood of Christ had not yet been established throughout the whole world. Over time, this vision came to the knowledge of the archdeacon of the city of Liège, Monseigneur Jacques Pantaleon, who was very, very impressed by it. Now, a few years later, in the year 1261, the same Monseigneur Jacques Pantaleon would go on to become the Pope, the Pope of the Catholic Church, and he took the name of Urban IV. The new Pope was very inclined to follow the message of Juliana and to establish the Feast of Corpus Christi throughout the Church. But he hesitated. Could he, as Pope, take upon himself such a grave decision, simply based on the vision of a young Belgium girl? Now, at the same time in Italy, God was preparing the answer to the Pope's question. A priest, a priest was celebrating Mass in a little church in the little town of Bolsena, close to the city of Orvieto in Italy. The poor priest was assailed by terrible temptations against faith in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. As this priest was celebrating Mass and saying the words, of holy consecration, all of a sudden, blood started dripping from the consecrated host, the consecrated host he was holding in his hands. So the priest tried to hide it, but the blood then dripped onto the floor. 
The priest was so impressed by this Eucharistic miracle that his doubts were immediately dispelled. God, who had been preparing this moment, had made sure that the Pope himself, Urban IV, was in near, nearby Orvieto. The priest rushed to tell the Pope of this miracle, and that was the sign the Pope had been waiting for. He immediately decided to establish the Feast of Corpus Christi for the Universal Church. Until today, Corpus Christi is celebrated all over the world with great pomp and ceremony. The Gospel for today is the beautiful and touching scene of our Lord speaking about the Eucharist, this great gift that He was going to give to humanity. In the Eucharist, our Lord does not give us just any gift. He gives us Himself as the gift, as the gift of our lives. Such was his burning desire to institute the Eucharist that he had already announced um, that he had already announced it for centuries before in the Old Testament, when God gave to the chosen people of Israel the manna, which Holy Scripture calls the bread from heaven. It was his way of saying, Be be prepared. This manna is only a sign of the great gift of the Eucharist I am preparing for you. Now Mary the mother of Jesus, who knew very well how to read the signs of God, was burning with holy expectation to see the institution of the Holy Eucharist. According to Monsieur Jean Cla, the founder of the Heralds of the Gospel, in his three-volume book, um, Maria Santissima, O Paraiso de Deus, which translates in Most Holy Mary, the Paradise of God, this burning expectation to see the institution of the Holy Eucharist is perhaps the reason why Mary approached Jesus and asked him to perform a miracle at the wedding of Cana. She was expecting him actually to, to institute the sacred, the sacrament of his body and blood in the Eucharist at this wedding of Cana. But the time had not yet arrived. People at the time we're still not prepared for this great miracle. In the Gospel for today, presented to us by St. John, chapter 6, verses 51 to 58, we see our Lord trying to prepare the Jews for this great sacrament, this great gift that He was preparing for them and, and for us. So let's, let's read an excerpt of this Gospel. I am the living bread, says Jesus, that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Here our Lord is telling the Jewish crowds that He is the living bread that came down from heaven, the bread of, of angels, the bread of life. And whoever eats this bread will live forever. Now, what was the crowd's reaction, they responded, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They refused his words. Yes, they rejected Jesus and they rejected his teaching. The crowds were actually horrified by what the Lord Jesus had just said. It is impossible to read this passage without feeling kind of sorry for the crowds, but also for feeling kind of a certain indignation against the crowds, for not believing the words of Jesus, for not believing Jesus, who, who, they, who they, they saw firsthand perform so many miracles, curing the sick, the lame, um, walking on water, uh, multiplying bread and fish, and, and resurrecting the dead. It is certain that when Christ made this announcement about the great gift of the Eucharist, he wanted to give um, to them as a gift. Christ was also granting special graces to all of those who heard him say this in order to, to understand or at least to accept the spiritual significance of his words. But they rejected his gift of love. They rejected his words. 
They rejected his gift of life. They rejected Jesus in the Eucharist. When they heard these mysterious words, I am the living bread that came down from heaven, these crowds should have knelt and should have kissed the feet of Jesus. And they should have said, Lord, we do not understand what this great mystery uh, means, but Lord, if it comes from your blessed lips, if it comes from the lips of, of divine wisdom, we believe. We believe because we love you. That should have been their attitude. It's the only right attitude before God is, is to believe, is to have faith, faith full of love. But these Jewish crowds um, tried to understand these mysterious words, um, the divine words of God, with their intelligence, with their very limited intelligence. And they unfortunately, therefore, rejected the greatest gift that mankind could ever receive. They rejected Jesus in the Eucharist. We today are called to make reparation for this sin, to make reparation for all of the sins against the Most Holy Eucharist. And the greatest reparation that can be made for a sin is not only just prayers or sacrifices, but what St. John Chrysostom calls the practice of the opposite virtue. Now, the practice of the opposite virtue is to practice that virtue which is directly contrary to a particular sin that is being committed. So this offense to our Lord, when he, when he announced the institu institution of the sacrament of his body and blood, was made, um, this, this offense was made because of a lack of faith, because of a lack of love. So, let's now practice the opposite of this lack of faith and lack of love. Let's offer to our Lord many and many beautiful acts of faith and love in our communion and at Mass today. Let's love our Lord in the Eucharist. Let's unite ourselves to our Lord in the Eucharist. Let's submit ourselves to our Lord in the Eucharist. And let's ask Our Lady, Let's ask Our Lady of the Most Blessed Sacrament of the Eucharist to thank her divine Son, Jesus, for the, this immense gift of His love, Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria.